Chosen in love. Embracing God's redemption, provision and compassion. God's love is deeper than we can imagine. From the very beginning, he chose you and secured your salvation. But what does this mean for our life today? Join us as we explore the powerful truths of his redemption, provision and compassion. This revelation will unlock your true identity in Christ and transform your relationship with him. Are you ready to discover how deeply you're loved? Chosen in love, embracing God's redemption, provision and compassion. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome, welcome to Lions Raw 38 Ministries. Amos 38 tells us the lion has roared, who will not fear or hear the Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy. My name is Fernando George Magalhães and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip and release Christ-like disciples both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as providing you with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today, we got an exciting encouragement word, but before we get onto it, let me bring up our main verse for today. And our main verse for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 27, verse 5. This time, I will be reading from the Passion Translation. You didn't choose me, but I've chosen and commissioned you to go into the world to bear fruit. And your fruit will last because whatever you ask of my Father, for my sake, he will give it to you. Amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got this beauty here today, Prophet Sabrina which happens to be my wife. And uh, <laughs> I always say that every week because I'm always <laughs> excited to have my wife on the show on today's, mm. it's not a show, on today's program. So today she's got a great word, an encouraging word. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let me just double check for you to make sure Yes, just before you get on, let me just explain a little bit of what we're going to be covering today. Yes. For those who are arriving a little late. Um, <laughs> today, you will be encouraged by a simple but powerful word for such a time as this. Chosen in love, embracing God's redemption, provision and compassion is a word that will encourage, comfort and boost your faith in a time when we most need it. This word will explore the profound love of God and how he has chosen us from the very beginning, as emphasized in John 15, 16 and 1 Peter 2 verses 9 to 10, just to name a few. We will uncover three aspects of God's love, redemption, provision and compassion, highlighting how he sacrificed through Christ his ongoing care for our physical and spiritual needs and his deep mercy for our frailty reveal the depth of his love. By embracing our true identity in Christ, we align ourselves to genuinely worship and honor God. Ultimately, this word will remind us that through God's love, our salvation is secure and we can trust in his faithfulness in all circumstances. Let's pray and begin. Amen. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the time we are about to spend together, Lord God, a time that will encourage all of us, Lord God, a time that make known of your heart, Lord God, a time that bring forth breakthrough, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, those who hear it, Lord God, it's going in, this word is going into fertile soil, Lord God, and we thank you that we will see the fruit of it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Wonderful. You said it quite well. <laughs> Today, let's explore the incredible love of God and how he's always present in every situation we face. Right? See, God loved us deeply and chose and chose us for from the very beginning. Right? It wasn't us who chose him. He chose us. 
God's desire to create us is rooted in his love for us compared to what we've heard before, you know, like God is angry all the time and all that. No, God's desire, I'll say it again, God's desire to create us is rooted in his love for us. The love of God inspires us to embrace our two in identity. Why do we say inspire? Because he true. is true identity, yes. Not two identity, true, true. true. identity. Uh, why do I say inspire us? Because we have free will right accepting him isn't about doing him a favor it's about aligning ourselves in the right way to genuinely worship and honor him john chapter 15 verse 16 from the ampc says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and i have appointed you i have planted you that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit may be lasting, that it may remain, abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name as presenting all that I am, we're talking about Jesus, he may give it to you. See, God's choice of us reflects his deep understanding of each one of us. You know, you've probably heard like God, God knows each one of us individual created us all, you know, uh, woven all us all, you know, as individual. So his choice of us reflects his deep understanding of each one of us. It shows how much he loves us. With him, our salvation is truly secure. How? So let's read 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. You want to read it? 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10 in the Amplified Classic. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Once you were unpitied, but now you are pitied and have received mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand the blessing that God has um, bestowed upon us? The blessing of, of priesthood, the blessing of identity. You're, you're not like, we're not like, um, like, uh, are you, like I come from Mauritius, right? An African background as well. So you, you, we, I usually say that it's like a chicken. Uh, you're not running around like a chicken without a head, right? You understand who you are through Christ. Now, this verse beautifully reflects the incredible love God has for each one of us, right? His love goes beyond mere word. It shines through his action. How so? Well, the gift of salvation is a timeless blessing in itself, demonstrating his unwavering provision and care in our lives. Now, we can see these actions beautifully outlined in the following free, uh, freaky aspect of, of his love. Now, I'm not saying that that's all the aspect of it, but we're going to talk about these three, three key aspects of God's love. First one is redemption. Second one is provision. And third one is? Compassion. <laughs> you sounded like you said three, uh, three key aspects of God's love instead of three key aspects. <laughs> yeah. Don't I to do something. All right, so the three, <laughs> as, three key aspects of God's love, redemption, mm -mm. provision, mm -mm. and compassion. Amen? Well. So let's get on to it. Number one, redemption. Mm, come on, Sabrina. No tongue tied, right? God demonstrates his love and goodness through Christ's sacrifice. You want to read the verse for it? Romans 8.32 tells us in the Amplified Classic, He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for our soul, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Ooh, what is it talking about? Redemption. Talk That's right. It's talking about redemption, isn't it? Number two, provision. What does that mean? Well, God satisfies our spiritual and physical needs, right? Compared to what, you, you know, most of the time you, you hear people talk about, oh, my spiritual need, my spiritual need. No, God satisfies both of it. Let's give a verse for it. You want to read it? Psalm 107, 8 to 9. Psalm 107, verses 8 to 9 in the Amplified Classic again. 
O oh, that man would praise and confess to the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness and his wonderful works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with good. Amen. Isn't it? Provision. That's right. Now, there you hear, for he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with good. But you are, it's just the soul. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, no, wherever Jesus went, if you look at, at his ministry on earth, he, did he provided for all things, for all of them. Number three, compassion. God shows mercy and pity to those who fear him, knowing our frailty and limitations. Want to read a verse? Psalm 103, 13 to 14. So Psalm 103, 13 to 14. As a father loves and pities his children, so the Lord loves and pities those who fear him with reverence, worship, and awe. For he knows our frame. He earnestly remembers and imprints on his heart that we are dust. Compassion. Compassion. Right? Now, this is a wonderful news, isn't it? That we can experience all these right here, not just when you go to heaven. Right? See, God has always been by our side. His presence with us now, and he will continue to be there for us every step of the way through eternity. We're going to take a moment to look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 8 together. These two um, uh, um, verses will beautifully reinforce what I just shared. You want to read it? Hebrews 13, verse 8. Again, Amplified Classic. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever to the ages. Now, Revelation 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God, He who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the ruler of all. Wow. What, what, what does that mean? Well, both verses beautifully highlight God's eternal presence throughout time, past, present, and future, right? Similarly, God is always with us in our lives, watching over us at all time. Nothing in creation, and that's the verse, I just didn't put the uh, scripture there. Nothing in creation escapes his sight, reminding us that we are never alone. Now, we're going to explore both, uh, in the Bible the example of how God was, God is, and will be from both the Old and the New Testament, right? Um, these, the reason why we're going to explore it as well is because... Oh, today we want um, you, uh, all of us to see that God is all, was always there for us, is always here for us, and will always be there for us in our life. That's why I say not just in heaven, here on earth. Now let's look at the first one, the Old Testament, the story of Moses and the Israelite in Exodus. The first one was, is God was. Can you read the verse for me? Exodus 3 verse 6. Also he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. So this verse, right, basically we're talking about, you know, that encounter where Moses had with God, right? And this verse beautifully illustrates how God, the, how the Lord reassured Moses of his faithfulness. By mentioning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God lovingly reminds Moses of his nature as a covenant-keeping God, emphasizing his enduring um, promises and commitment through generation, because that was a time um, where God was um, basically talking to Moses to go and uh, release uh, to, um, the Israelites from um, Egypt. Now, for him, when he started, he reminded Moses, right? He was there. He was with them. And that he is with them. We're going we're gonna to check that out, right? It's like saying, don't forget, I was there with them as well. Right? Now, in the same story, we're going to see where God is. Exodus 14, 21 to 22. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the Israelites went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, 
the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Wow, amazing, right? So during their escape from Egypt, God actively actively intervenes by parting the Red Sea. We all know the story. Now showing his immediate power and presence. So we know he was he talked to Moses ours. Now in the presence of the Israelite is going, we're following the story, right? He is because he's in, uh, actively intervening by parting the Red Sea. And in we're going to... Um, so sorry? past, now, present. Presence. Now we're going to go, we're going to see in the same story, God will be. You want to read it? All right, Exodus 33, 14. Exodus 33, 14. And the Lord said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Mm. So in the wilderness, God promises to lead his people to the promised land, assuring them of his future guidance and provision where God will be. Now, this beautifully illustrates God's eternal nature and his continuous relationship with people across time. And as he's done for the Israelite, he's still doing the same today for all of us from the time we were conceived to where we are right now in the present moment to where we will be, right? Now, let's look at it from a different po uh, point um, perspective, sorry, to the New Testament. <laughs> The first story is that of Lazarus. I'm sure you're all aware of um, the story of Lazarus. We're going to read uh, John 11, 17, and then John 11, 25. John 11, 17. So when Jesus arrived, he found that he, when? Lazarus, had already been in the tomb for days. Mm. So when Lazarus uh, fall, uh, fell ill and uh, died, Jesus arrived after how many days? Four days, Martha expressed her, her belief that if Jesus has been there, her brother would not have died. Now read the next uh, um, verse. Yes. John eleven twenty five. <laughs> Jesus said to her, I am myself the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in and relies on me, although he may die, yet he shall live. Ooh, now, is this going to be a mouthful right now? But listen to that carefully. I might repeat it because it is so important. This will bring that comfort, right, of knowing how God is so awesome and he's chosen us so he loves us. You know, it's like, it's like um, what you hear, you know, you love me. You have to take responsibility of me, right? Um, but God is not without responsibility where he says, I love you, and he just drops you like a sack of potato, right? Yeah, I know. I like using the word sack of potato. Anyway, let's keep going. Now, this statement revealed that he is a source of life, right? God is. He is a source of life. Reinforces the promise of eternal life. God was. And assures believers of future res resurrection. God will be. See, when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, it powerfully demonstrates his authority over death. And his eternal nature affirming that God is always present and active in the lives of those who follow him, which is us. Right? And if you're a believer, and if you're not yet, never too late. Wait afterward, right? Another example from the New Testament is that of the Great Commission, which really we all should be aware of, which encourages us in our daily walk as children of God. Let's read from Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Now, Eve, now the 11, <laughs> George, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed and made an appointment with them. And when they saw him, they fell down and worshipped him. But some doubted. Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, all authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the, into, the name, into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to preserve everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion to the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. 
Wow. So after his resurrection, Jesus instructed his disciples to share the gospel with all nations, right? Assuring them, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, this statement illustrates the realization of his plan through Jesus. Jesus, he was, emphasizes um, God's continual presence and guidance, which is what our daily life is. He is and provide reassurance of his unwavering support for believers in their mission because you're not you haven't finished all your mission yet right you're still on your mission of walking from glory to glory that is he will be i'll say that again he was emphasizing his continual presence and and guidance he is and provides assurance of his unwavering support for believers in their mission or in their walk of life until until um, eternity, he will be. So what do we take away from that? Today you might wonder, okay, you know, usually they do, there's a practical point from this. Um, I, tr I truly believe there is, may not be the way we usually do practical point, but it's, an, it's, it's essential for us in this, in this uh, particular study to reflect on the goodness of God in our lives considering um where he has been how god is presently uh, is present right now and the wonderful promises he has for our future embracing this perspective can bring us hope and encouragement all right um and just before you finish with prayer so i would encourage you after this word to do one thing um if you're going through a tough time right now and you're finding it hard to see where god is right now in your life Pick up a simple thing. Pick up a piece of paper. I'm not saying your phone. I'm not saying the laptop. Forget about that because you need to see it with your own eyes. You need to see it right in front of you and you need to see what you're going to write. And then you put where God was. So just put was past, is present, and will be future. Now, what you do is on the was Try to think of a moment, try to think of, a, of incidents in your life that really marked you. Moments that was either traumatic or the opposite. Moments where it was some happy. of the most memorable, happy places. And then write those down in the was. Because God was there, whether you like it or not. Whether you can see it or not, that's a better word. He was there. And then ask God, close your eyes and ask God, where were you there? He will reveal to you where he was in that moment. So write a couple of them, write two or three in was, in the, in the past. God will speak to you and he will tell you exactly what it was in those moments. Then write in the present, Lord, where are you now? And wait, you may have to wait a little longer in the present because usually your emotions get in the way, um, especially because it is the present. It's mm. what you're going through right now. And we tend to get really emotional about the present because we're unsure about the present. In fact, if you really think about it, we get more unsure about the present than we do about the future. We're, const we're more worried about the present than we are about the future. Think about it, and mm. you'll realize that's, that's actually true. And then write down two or three things that you're going through right now. Again, don't just fill it up with the bad stuff. Fill it up with good stuff that's as well. That's right. And write two or three things. Close your eyes, ask the Lord where he is in the present, where he is right now. And then do the future one. And the future will be easier, actually, because the future you will have prophetic words that people have spoken over His your promises. life. Promises of God that will come to your life. And ask him the same thing. Where will you be? You'll be surprised. He may give you a vision. He may uh, say, say a word. He may say a place. But he will speak to you. Uh, we tend to have this mentality sometimes that he only speaks to the special. No, he speaks to every single one of us. Every one of us. We're all us. special to him. There is not a respecter of persons. Mm. So if you do that, you take the time to actually sit down. That's the point of this word today. And appreciate that you are chosen by God, by his love. He chose you by his love. He loves you that much. You will be surprised of how much God will reveal to you about your life and, and, and his great plans that he has for your life. So I encourage you to do that just before we do our prayer. Um, I love the way you said, you know, even the good things. I mean, I mentioned one which is not good, even though it's, it's, it's still a good news because God showed me where he was. Um, there is being time. I'll give you an example of good thing. You know, there's time where I'm like, oh, 
I don't know how this is going to happen, Lord. And God reminded me of good things that, that, you know, there's things that I didn't even have to pray. I just thought about it. I'm like, oh, you know, I want this right now, Lord. And someone just knocked on the door. Someone just said, hey, you know, I felt God said, give that to you. And this happens so many times um, with us. Then when we feel like, oh, Lord, oh, I don't know how that's going to happen. Is God going to come to pass on this thing? Is that his will? And then we are reminded where God was in his blessing. He blessed us before. He will bless us again. He healed us before. He will think God in his presence, in his glory has already set up the miracles we need for our everyday life. He has set up the miracle we need for whatever situation we already get, we are going through, right? All we need to, to do is like, Lord, this is a situation. Give it to God. I thank you for the miracle you've already made plan for me. I'm receiving it. I, I know where you are. I know that you are here. And I know that you will be there, right? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for helping us to recognize the workings of your glory in the midst of every situation. Even in the most difficult circumstances, we want to see you. We know you're turning things around for us, working all things good uh, together for good. Thank you for helping us to perceive your goodness at all times. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, let me finish by this quote by Tony Evans. I like this quote. It says, God will meet you where you are in order to take you where he wants you to be. So he's not saying, you know, to go, to go where you want to go. He's not saying for you to be, how do you call it, baby? How did you say to me? Um, um, oh, this is where your destination, you need to be there already. No, I like what he says. He said, God will meet you where you are in order to take you where he wants you to go. How wonderful is that God, right? How wonderful is he? Amen? Amen. All right. If you're new here today, if this is your first time you're listening to the word of God, this is your moment right now. It's not a coincidence. It's a divine appointment. And the word of God is very clear and says in 1 John 5, 4 to 5, amongst others, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith i want to ask you where are you putting your faith are you putting your faith in money are you putting your faith in in whatever hobbies in gurus in whatever uh, uh motivational speakers are you putting your faith in your parents or family members or idols where are you putting your faith you will not be here if you're you were satisfied with your life if you knew that everything is perfect you will not be listening to this word today there's a reason why you're here. It's a divine appointment because you know, deep down, you know, there's something, something special, something real is missing. And that is God. The word of God goes on to say, who is he who overcomes the world? You want to overcome your issues in your life right now? You want to overcome the world? You feel, you feel like you're constantly losing out all the time? Well, but he, the word of God says, but he... He or she, obviously, who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Oh, wait up, George. There's this, there's that. Jesus is the Son of God. But, George, what about Jesus is the Son of God? Jesus, 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 Jesus. There is no other. There is only one way, one truth, one God, one truth, one way, one life. And that is through Jesus Christ. It's not a coincidence that the whole world that we live in, and yes, there is a reason for that, we are living in a fallen world, is so hell-bent on attacking Christianity, on attacking that very name, Jesus, 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 because the name of Jesus brings healing, world. deliverance. Yeah. It, it, it crushes everything. Yeah. He rules over all. Amen. Only Jesus Christ. Amen. It Amen. goes on to say in his word, in John 3, 16 to 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Again, talking about Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that might means will. will if saved. you put your faith in him, you will be saved. So what do I have to do, George? Well, 1 John 1, 9, amongst others, says, If you confess, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us 
our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, there you go, George. I'll do my best. I'm better than that person. I don't care what person you compare yourself to. I don't care if you compare yourself to the Pope. There is none but Jesus Christ who is perfect. Uh -huh. And he is our measurement. He's, he's right. the our only standard. one that we measure up to, our standard that we should measure up to. So you have to put your faith in Christ Jesus. So what do I do? And you mentioned that word sin. Well, sin in the most simplistic form means when we try to live our lives without God. That is a sin because you're not created to live without relationship with God. You are created in his image. In fact, look at Romans 10 verses 9 to 10. It goes on to say that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Belief is faith, is trust. It starts with a choice. So make that choice today. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it doesn't stop there. Once you do that, the word of God goes on to say, as you can see on the screen, Titus 3 verse 5, Ephesians 2 verse 8, Acts 1 verse 8 says, Then he saved us by grace through faith, the gift of God, washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. So what does that mean? Well, right now, as you're listening to my voice, wherever you are, in your house, in the toilet, in the car, I don't care, in your office, forget about those around you. Who cares? Right now, this is your moment. You don't know how much time you have in your life. You may have another 30, 40 years. You may have a day. We don't know. But it will be the most amazing decision you'll ever make in your life. You can't live without Jesus. You can't live without God. He's the only one that satisfies you. He's the only one that brings pleasure, that brings satisfaction, that brings wholeness to your life. He is the meaning of life. And you need him right now. So as you're listening to my voice, call out to him as you're listening, just like I'm talking to you right now. You call out to him. In words, so long as it comes from your heart, the, 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 the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. So if it comes from your heart and you mean it, you cry out to Jesus and you basically say in your own words, from this day forward, Jesus, I'm making my Lord and Savior. I can't live life like this any longer. Come and be my Lord and Savior. I choose to believe mm. from this day forward that God raised you from the dead in my place. And now I belong to you. Use my life for your glory. Amen. Amen means so be it. It's as simple as that. And God will take you in. He will protect you, will guide you. But it doesn't stop there as you heard before. He wants to give you the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. That's what we call um, the joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. You need to invite the very Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, to come and live inside of you. Not just to come upon you. He comes and he will live inside of you. You will become the church, the temple, the synagogue, the whatever you want to call it. His indwelling place mm -hmm. where he will dwell with you, in you. And he will guide you. He'll protect you. He'll correct you. He'll comfort you. He'll... he'll He'll, be, you'll, there with he'll you. be there with you every step of the way till the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? We're going to do that together. We're going to invite him together. Amen? Amen. Let's do that. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you that we are saved in Christ Jesus. We belong to you, Lord. And now we ask you with hungry hearts, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh from head to toe, inside and out. We belong to you. Let your power, let your fire fall upon us. Yes, Lord. Set us a light that the world will come and watch us burn for you. Yes. Revival fire that cannot be quenched. Yes. For your word says that you are a consuming fire. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, come with power. Come with fire. Come and use us for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Amen. Heaven rejoices amen. over you right now. The Word of God actually tells us that. I encourage you, get yourself a Bible mm -hmm. so you can learn about the character of God, so you can learn who God is, but also so you can learn who oh, you, you are. are in God's eyes. You will see yourself through God's eyes, through His Word. 
Amen? Amen. And get connected with a Bible teaching, Holy Spirit filled church. You need to connect yourself with believers. It's important that you have a relationship mm -hmm. with believers. They're not perfect. None of us are perfect. Jesus is perfect. Mm -hmm. No one else. But we need each other. It's, it's supposed to be a safe place for you to learn, to grow, to serve, to be served, to edify. Edify means encourage, to, to be encouraged. We need the body of Christ. We need the church. So get, you get yourself connected. If you are in a place where you can't go in person, do it online. There's churches online that you, get, you can get connected with um, or house churches as well. They're, they're springing up all over the world. Uh, but please get connected with the body of Christ. It's so important for your walk and for your growth. Amen. Amen. All right. This brings us to our second part of the program, which we call the collective. Where we spend time with those that are watching, those that are listening, and we pray, prophesy, whatever Holy Spirit leads us to do. I encourage you, if you're new here, stay, stick around. Let us know where you're from. Let us know what you did today. If you gave your life for the first time with the Lord, to the Lord, we'll love to, to send you a word as well of encouragement, a prayer, uh, and to get you connected if need be. With, with the body of Christ, with with a church. Amen. You don't miss on anything else. Okay. If you haven't already, as you can see right up there is all the social media platforms that we are connected with. There's plenty, hundreds and oh, hundreds of resources, resources, free resources you can access. I encourage you to use them in your Bible study groups, cell groups, churches, wherever you want to use. It will help you in your God-given calling. Amen. 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 This brings us to the... Collective.